Hello Taurus and welcome to your astrology horoscope reading at the Oracle of Atlantis. I hope you're doing well today. So we are going to dive into the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Oracle. This lovely deck right here to take a look at the houses on your astrological reading that need to um, have your time, attention, and focus on. But first, we're going to pull a card for the overall situation or energy. So what is the energy or situation for Taurus at this time? Please and thank you. We have Gemini and air. So Gemini is connected to network, communication, sharing, while the air element is connected to the breath, open-mindedness, objectivity, and learning. There's almost this energy of breathing new life, new air into perhaps a project that you once started. There is a beauty and freedom in lightening your connection to the earth. While your deep connections and commitments are an important part of life, there is also value in detachment. Where can you lighten up and stop taking things so seriously? Where can you step outside of your routine and infuse some versatility? Experiment with different ways of responding to life, approaching them as playful taste tests. Seek new experiences and light connections. Open your mind and welcome energetic movement. Play with letting life pass through you and not holding things so tightly. You can actually do this as a way of cleansing your energy field, your aura with the air. If you're outside on a windy day, just allowing, kind of like imagining the air to pass through your being to cleanse and clarify your energy. Air. So this may be a call to get some air here. Spend time in your imagination and allow your mind to open. Welcome new and unusual thoughts and ideas. This is a powerful time to stargaze and visualize the future of your dreams. If you feel called, share your musings with another and follow the meandering trail of mental collaboration. As a more long-term practice, permit healthy detachment by zooming out from your day-to-day -day reality. Remain open and keep learning and expanding with the breath of life and never forget, every beautiful reality began as a fantasy. A song came to mind, what is it? Fantasy by Mariah Carey, but the free fall, not the free, the free guy, the free guy soundtrack, look it up. It's, it's good, it's short. But it's just a sweet, sweet fantasy, baby, when I close my eyes. So let's take a look at the houses. So what houses, energy, or information does Taurus need to know at this time? We have house number nine. This is your house of purpose and spiritual growth. House number two, which is typically Taurus's house, physical security, possessions, material values, and self-worth. The house of value. House number 10, which is your house of achievement and enterprise. Structure, discipline, life mission, accomplishments, and career. And house number eight, the house of transformation, karma, facing fears and legacies.
So let's start with house number nine. I think I'm just gonna move these down here for a second. House number nine and house number two, the house of purpose and value. We do have the king of pentacles showing up on the pre-shuffle here, your energy Taurus, with Jupiter and the third eye, mature grounded male, successful wealth, businessman, bettering yourself, not a risk taker, empire, thriving, high status, stability, security, enterprising, someone preoccupied with financial matters. So the king of pentacles, that could be part of your purpose as well. Finding that, that balance, kind of owning and loving your life, cherishing the things that you value here. So what is the purpose for Taurus at this time? We have the energy of moving on with the eight of cups, Saturn and Pisces, abandonment, abandoning plans, walking away, letting go. Traveling, escapism, reaching limit, self-analysis, self-discovery, and introspection. Looking deeper, withdrawal, disappointment, and seeking the truth. So this is connected to your solar plexus chakra, which is your, um, your confidence, your joy, your enthusiasm for life, right? So this is your overall purpose at this time is like searching and finding that joy once again here there may be a little call for introspection we have the energy of foresight the sun and aries the third eye chakra travel moving abroad foreign land foresight forward planning moving forward self-confidence self-belief and freedom success happy with choices and outcome, hard work paying off and experiencing life. So there's definitely this energy. Um, your purpose at this time is to move on from something, whether it's move a physical location or even a past experience or even relationship or even perception of self here. Definitely evolving past it, whatever the case may be. The phrase that's sticking out the most with this Eight of Cups to me is letting go of something here. It's like you no longer deserve to carry the weight of something, whatever it is, viewer. And I'm sure you will know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at house number two. The house of value for Taurus. We have the Seven of Cups with dreams. So this may be a call to take like a back step here. We go from the eight to the seven. Um, again, solar plexus chakra. But the cups can represent the different like modalities or realms or blessings, major life lessons, lots of options, choices, multiple possibilities, opportuni opportunities, picking and choosing, decisions, procrastination, dreaming, fantasy, illusion, Wishful thinking and imagination, hallucinations and meditation. Oh, look at that. He did want to come out with security. So it's almost like suggesting, obviously, you value some sort of security here. And you're... Um... With this, though... There may be some sort of confusion with one's own values as well. Maybe kind of working through some soul-searching energy, right? You just kind of have that coming through with the Eight of Cups. You may even be unsure of what you actually value at this time. But the King of Pentacles is grounded, stability, practical, logical. Maybe not a risk taker, but also knows when to make wise business investments kind of energy, which is kind of what you value here. The seat of your own throne. And there may be lots of options. There may be a lot of options that you don't see at this time, opportunities.
there is something with wishful thinking, and wishful thinking can be a good thing. Um, as long as we're not just resting in that place only, but wishful thinking can also help open and expand our mind if we allow ourselves to dream and fantasize about possibilities here, right? Hallucinations, if you're having hallucinations, I don't know, if you're on some good drugs, maybe. I don't know if hallucinations are really a thing, right? Like, I don't know, I see stuff randomly throughout the course of my life all the time. Just random little lights or... I don't know, one time I went to the hair salon to get my hair cut and the mirror I was looking into, there were these lights going around it the whole time, like right on the edge of the mirror. The whole frame wasn't lit at once at any given time, but it was like almost like a circuit of random color lights that would just kind of shimmer along the edges of the mirror, like neon kind of LED lighting. Uh, it was the weirdest fucking thing. <laughs> and the whole time I kept thinking like, oh my God. But every now and then I see things like that and it's like, it's like in the head, it's kind of like you kind of know it's a hallucination, but on the other aspect of it, there is something like a deep, a deeper spiritual connection that you might not grasp. So we'll put that up there, because I would I would say it's a suit. A, safe to assume that you value some sort of security in your physical life, perhaps even in your own body and self here with that eight of cups. So let's look at house number 10. This is the energy of achieving house of enterprise. So what is Taurus bound to achieve here? I'm the queen of wands with vibrancy, good business sense. So the queen of wands is very passionate, brings a lot of energy to situations, it just naturally draws opportunity to her. An attractive, magnetic, mature woman, a helpful friend who is well liked, a kind, loyal, generous, confident, and competitive woman who enjoys enterprise and the limelight also values her home and family life and this is connected to the two of pentacles with balance it's almost like receiving some sort of vibrancy in life but there will it will be like a balanced energy it's like with the achievement of this Queen of Wands, it's going to bring about a balance here. And it's not, like, I don't really get a boastful energy. Angel number 22 coming up. One, two, three. Resourcefulness, ups and downs, adaptability, flexibility, juggling life, juggling money, transferring money, profit and loss. Income and outings, financial decisions, financial stress, and partnership. I'm getting the energy of, like, budget. Budgeting here. But also kind of believing and knowing that you will have all that you need with that inner security of the King of Pentacles. The Queen of Wands can be very charismatic, so this could be even achieving your own um, personal health goals, like your confidence in self, if you're working out, things of that nature. Your own vibrancy and magnitude, which is being reflected in your outer world here. So Capricorn is the energy of the outer world. You're almost like coming off as vibrant and wise, perhaps even creative, 
creative or artistic in some form or another. So house number eight. This is traditionally the house of Scorpio. Your house of transformation. So what is transforming for Taurus? Or about to. A decision. See, you may even see, you may see some like a decision you have to make. You may get a new perception or insight that changes the decision you were about to make. Stalemate truth, sitting on the fence, crossroads, difficult decisions, painful choices, stressful decisions, oppositions, and facing your fear, being torn between two relationships and divided loyalty. The moon in Libra. So this is really asking you to go within. Could be a call to weigh the pros and cons within a choice or decision one has to make. It is connected to the third eye chakra. So this is like kind of doing perhaps what is best for you. This could even be the call to walk away or end a friendship that maybe you just don't want to do because it's an awkward conversation. But then if your intuition knows that it's going to be the healthiest choice for you, are you going to move on and step into your own, your own strength here by making the right decisions for yourself? We have emotional intelligence and inspiration connected to this decision. So this is what is transforming. So the King of Cups can represent emotional mastery. Which is beautiful because you have this Eight of Cups, right? And the Eight of Cups is kind of walking up a mountainside to connect to the Creator, to the Divine, to Soul Search. And then you receive some emotional wisdom or intelligence, trust, wealth of knowledge, Caring, healing, and good advice. Someone who understands unconscious motivations, a man in touch with his emotional life, a good friend, a mature and emotionally stable person. Paired with the Ace of Wands. This is the energy coming after this emotional understanding or intelligence. New beginnings, good news. Physically starting something. Creative spark, new initiative. Finding new passion, enthusiasm, urgency, accepting a challenge, potential talent, growth, action, travel, excitement, and getting in the game. So this is like making a decision based on like true passion here. But it's almost like the divine is saying before you can have this um, this change, this transformation, there are choices and decisions, but there's also this confusion. So by going through these energies, seeking introspection here, it's like you're gaining emotional maturity and intelligence, which then will kind of kick off some passionate new interest or spark or creation, beginning, whatever that may be for you. Because it comes from like, I'm getting like an elated place instead of like a heavy vibration. So let's take a look at the future outcome of your overall situation. Future outcome of the overall situation for Taurus. Moving on, security, vibrancy, and decisions. So we have the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords can represent heartache and pain, betrayal, loneliness, removal, absence, division, depression, separation, sadness, heartache, unhappiness, upheaval, grief, sorrow, upset, disorder, confusion, alienation, loss, distraction, ill health, conflict, and disillusion. Hmm. 
Then we have the Page of Swords with curiosity, significant information, logic, fairness, ideas, inspiration, planning, vigilance, protection, and dexterity. One who is calculating and unconcerned about the feelings of others. One who is mentally quick and subtle. Those who are both mentally and physically dexterous. It's almost like through this experience in your current situation, Taurus, it may trigger some sort of pain, but then that pain is what kind of sparks that curiosity here, right? Like these cards kind of mimic each other in a way. The King of Cups being the King of Hearts, the King of Emotions. He, he definitely understands what it is to go through that experience. That's what makes perhaps him emotionally intelligent here, enduring and understanding the pains of the heart. But then there's some sort of curiosity here with the light and shadow. We have the sun and Gemini's energy with the root chakra. It's like you may be seeing the light and the shadow of all things in the future. This could be for some of you if you are considering moving away from a relationship at this time. We did have the first card coming out, the Eight of Cups, with moving on. This could be that in the future you may have memories float to the surface, right? You may miss somebody. But with the Page of Swords, the Page of Swords is like very kind of new energy. So it's like almost like when you feel that you may be called to explore something different. Like if you have a specific type of partner that you typically gravitate towards, like towards, it's almost like recognizing that pain and like, eh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll sample a little something different here, right? That kind of energy. Of course, not everybody is going to be leaving a relationship There's definitely a curiosity in the future, though, because the curiosity can be like um, studying and exploring, opening that mind, right? And we did have all that air energy coming in as your main focus with Gemini and the air element. And now we have two airs, right? So it's like that, that breath of fresh air. The Three of Swords, I kind of see it all weird because the Three of Swords, if you've ever seen Hocus Pocus 2, the Three of Swords is actually connected to the second, to Hocus Pocus 2 when the book comes flying through the window. The first time I watched it, I swore it was the magician. And then the, the last few times I watched it, I it just kind of flips quickly. But it's the Three of Swords, and that kind of makes sense if you use like the the characteristics of those three witches, right, as the Three Swords the maiden, mother, and crone energy. But it's like their actions almost become vengeful because of pains of the past, which is, I mean, fair. I think that's what how most people operate through life, right? In the future, with this page of swords, it may even be like a wanting to get kind of revenge, Because this could go very scorpionic type energy. And the only thing I mean with that is Scorpio has a, a scorpion has a stinger, right? So if it um, being an emotional creature, if you piss it off too much, it could it could sting you, right? And poison you. It's usually a defense mechanism, but you're learning some sort of emotional intelligence through pains of the past here that are bringing that balance. It's almost like coming out 
with that energy of achieving the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands um, is kind of like the superstar, <laughs> right? Um, that Leo energy, very prideful, very confident, very magnet and magnetic and charismatic. So it's almost like these pains are going to invoke that kind of achievement within self through healing it and exploring the curiosity of one's own perhaps psyche and nature here. So let's pull the Oracle's guidance here with the magical spell cards. We're going to get the overall message and an incantation you may want to work with. Closing advice. What is the overall advice and guidance for Taurus? Please and thank you. I'm hearing a song. My mother said, what will be will be. Is it Kesara? Kesara, Sara. Whatever will be, will be. Will I be pretty? Will I be witty? Here's what she said to me. Kesara, Sara. It totally is Kesara, is it? Um, we have the energy or spell of authenticity, darling. Who I truly am is good indeed. I am authentic in thought, word, and deed. Indeed. <laughs> That's cute. It's it's 10, which I love because it's house number 10, which is, again, connecting to that Queen of Wands energy. Hey, Sara, Sara, whatever will be, will be. Okay, so for the spell, I will write it out and have it on the screen. You can screenshot it to use on your own time if you like, just so you know. Sometimes in life, we make choices that pull us away from who we truly are. Sometimes these choices seem small. Sometimes they are obvious and painfully at odds with our core beliefs. But when they begin to accumulate, we find ourselves looking into the mirror of our souls and wondering, is this who I really am? It is easy to say we must always live from our core, but truthfully, we have all felt compromised at times, either by others or by our own choices. The spell will help you to return to living authentically without distance, separation, and disconnection from your true values, ethics, beliefs, and dreams. So it's like connecting you to this king of pentacles. True values, beliefs, and dreams. Yours, not your cultures, your families, and certainly not those of your conditioning, those of your soul your thoughts, dreams, ethics, and beliefs. This spell will help you to integrate these aspirations your soul has for you and enrich and empower your life every day. The universe is asking you to remember the dreams, ideals, and values that seem to have been covered over by years of living within the real world. The universe is sending you a clear message that it's not only possible to be truly yourself, it is the most exciting and safe path of them all. If you have chosen the spell, you may feel disconnected from your true self. Take heart. You are on your way to returning to authenticity. And this magical spell will empower this sacred path back to the wisdom of the soul. So the authenticity spell. You will need a yellow candle, a white cloth, star and eyes, Rosemary, cloves, cinnamon, and either wine, mead, or a red juice such as cranberry, cranberry or pomegranate. 
Prepare something you truly love to eat, something tasty and small. At the dark oh, at the dark or waning moon, go to your altar and lay the white cloth upon it. Set the yellow candle and your feast upon the altar. Visualize a circle of golden energy all about you and light your candle. Visualize the person you wish to be. This could be your younger self or the person whom you know you truly are, living out your truth, able to say yes to opportunities that feed your soul and able to say no to those requests that erode your soul. When you have connected with this person, see them embracing, merging, and as your very own self, then slowly eat your feast. This food of the spirit will feed the true essence of your authenticity within you. You are strengthening, feeding, charging, and allowing your authentic self to grow and to be fully merged with you once again. Um, I am going to add a little to this spell when working with this energy. A variation you could do is actually I would have like a mirror in front of you or at least a hand mirror. We have angel number 33 coming through. Um... Because although you want to create the version of who you want to be, the version of who you are is already perfect indeed. So you need to look upon that appearance and embrace it. Do you know what I mean? The more you embrace it and love it, the more you will see it. as like divinely inspired or crafted, you know what I mean? I am who I am, so this is the spell. I am who I am, and who I truly am is very good indeed. I will now live from my authentic self, my soul in thought, word, and deed. And by the power of three by three, as I do will, so mote it be. Take the herbs and sprinkle them into your wine or juice. Raise the glass in a toast to your authentic self and drink deep. Knowing this too is easing the thirst of your soul to live authentically and be true to you. After you have finished, spend a few moments in the strength, certainty, resolve, and calm within you. Feel it grow. When you are ready, see the circle of light about you shimmer. Grow brighter with this energy. Then be reabsorbed into the universe where it will grow and take root. Blessed be. I'm getting very much this energy of working with the root chakra as I was reading that last little part of the authenticity spell. Just kind of seeing the red root chakra. So you may want to work with your, your root chakra at this time. But not just your root chakra, grounding your energy frequently will help you stay strong and stable in your own resolve here and your own emotions. So that is the reading I have for you at this time, viewer. I hope it resonated. If it did, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. That'd be greatly appreciated. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.